One of the things you're going to do quite frequently when working in a Jupyter notebook is defining and using your own functions. There is a wealth of functions out there in predefined libraries that people have put together and organized for you and made nice and efficient. But some days you, you're just wanting to do something quickly. You don't have time to go out and find something. You just want to make a quick definition of a function. Or maybe you want it to operate a little bit differently than the standard or you want it to report additional information or you just, you just need the right tool for your project right now. That's where defining your own functions is incredibly useful. So let's take, for example, this function I've already started up here. Um, so the way Jupyter Notebook works is there are these code cells or code blocks that you can run that Jupyter then remembers the results of. So I can define a function in this block and then use it in a future block. So let's start with this function here. Let's suppose I want to define a function to carry out the Pythagorean theorem for me. So I want to put in an A and a B, and I want to return C, the hypotenuse, to give me the result of A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So in order to do that, in order to create my own function, I use the DEF command. DEF is short for define. It's saying, hey Jupiter, I want to define this name to mean the following set of instructions. So after DEF, you put a space, and then you put in the name of the function that you want. Just make sure it's a name that you can remember and preferably a name that's not already taken up by something else. So like you don't get to use the name max, M-A-X, because there's already a max function in Python. Um, you probably want to avoid the standard ones like abs, A-B-S, because that's already taken up by absolute value in a lot of uh, in a lot of libraries. But PT I don't think is generally taken, so I think I'm safe to use it here. If you've ever used a, a, uh, a protected name, don't worry, Jupyter will tell you. You just read the error message and go back and fix the name. It's really not a problem. It's just a thing you go back and fix. So let's suppose I want to call this one PT. Hopefully I'll remember that that's uh, short for Pythagorean theorem. I could spell it all the way out, but I have trouble spelling Pythagorean, so I don't really want to have to write that over and over again. Then you put in an open parentheses and a closed parentheses. Uh, this is going to be your function argument. So this is exactly like in math class when you have a function. You have f of x, and the of means that the x, the argument, goes inside the function. So you have an input x and an output f, f of x. Well, same thing here. We've got pt of a and B. Remember, I need two inputs for this, right? Because for the Pythagorean theorem, I need the A and the B. I need the two sides of the right triangle. So this function actually has two inputs, not like f of x. is more like an f of x and y, maybe, or f of x1 and x2. This is just going to be pt of a comma b. Now the names here, a and b, you can call them anything you want here. You don't have to use those names later. Uh, these are just placeholder names for while we are defining the function. So again, name them something that you can remember. You can call them a and b. You can call them side one and side two. You can give them any name that you want. There's very few restrictions on how you name things in a Jupyter notebook. Uh, the only requirement is that you list out the names that you want and you separate them by a comma, so a comma b. Or if we were doing, you know, five arguments, it would be argument one, comma argument two, comma argument three, comma argument four, comma argument five. You just keep adding to the list. You, it can take any number of arguments that you want. And then there's a couple of technical things you have to do. You have to put in a colon. The colon is just signaling that the next chunk of text goes together, that the next chunk of text is the thing that you are defining. And then in order to tell Jupiter that the next chunk of text is in the function, you need to indent anything that goes there. So indenting is pretty straightforward. Uh, let's suppose I hadn't written this yet. You just press the tab key and it will indent it however your indentation is set up. Some people like four spaces, some people like two. Some people like to actually use the tab character, some like to use the spaces. We're not gonna argue over that here. The important thing is, is that you use the tab to indent it and then you say, you, you start writing your code, you start writing your calculation. So in this case, I want to return C. I want my output to be the hypotenuse C that I'm going to calculate using the Pythagorean theorem. So I need to put in Pythagorean theorem, so that's going to be A squared plus B squared. Now you might notice I'm doing something a little bit different here. If you're new to Python, um, Python and, and by extension Jupiter, they don't use the caret for exponentiation. Uh, the caret is reserved for some 
bitwise logical operator that I never use, so I don't even know what it's called. Uh, for getting a power, for getting b to the second power, you do b double asterisk 2. So whatever comes after the double asterisk is your power. Uh, so here we've got a squared plus b squared. Of course, I want c, not c squared, so we're going to put parentheses around these. You can put the parentheses one of two ways. You can either uh, place the open parentheses here and the closed parentheses here, or if you uh, want to be a little bit efficient about it, you can highlight the text that you want in the parentheses and then press shift 9 to get the open parentheses button, and you get actually the open and the closed parentheses around both of them for a single keystroke. So if you can just grab the text that you want inside the parentheses, you can actually get an open and a close for the price of, of pressing the keyboard once. And now I've used all that time I saved to explain that to you. It's all about finding ways to make yourself more efficient. Life hacking, baby. This morning, I brushed my teeth in the shower, saved myself 90 seconds, which I just used to explain this to you. So we're going to go with double asterisk here to get a power and then 0 0.5 to get the square root. Uh, there is a proper square root SQRT function in the NumPy library, but you'll learn about that another time. So this is uh, the application of the Pythagorean theorem here, a squared plus b squared, all raised to the one half power. Now here's the thing, that's a wonderful calculation. Python will do that calculation for me. It will store it under the name C, but unless I tell it to return that value, it's just gonna sit out there in the ether waiting for me to do something with it. So that's why whenever you want your function to spit out a value or to give you a value at the end, you've got to put in a return command. Return just says that when you are done with the function, I want you to stop executing the function and I want you to return to me this value. So whenever we call this function, whenever we use PT somewhere else in the code, it's going to return that value of C that it calculated. And we'll see this later, but you can make the, the interior of this function as long and complicated as you want. You can have functions, call functions, you can do all kinds of stuff there. Uh, the important thing is that you have your computations here indented, and then you have return C here as well. So now when I run this cell, I'm going to come over here to the run button. Uh, the check mark indicates that it has run. It even tells me what time uh, it ran and how long it took. Now what's happened is Jupiter now remembers that I've assigned this name PT to, uh, to this set of instructions. So now let's suppose we use the function here in the next code block. So here I'm calling the function. Let me put in a little bit more space here to make this a little more legible. Um, one of the nice things about Python as a programming language, it, you can usually put spaces in places uh, and it won't change the way the code runs. It just improves the readability. So here we've got pt of 3 comma 4. So in other words, I'm calling this function. I'm saying, hey Jupiter, remember I defined that name pt earlier and we gave it that set of instructions? Well, I want you to reference that from your memory now and use those instructions to carry out that calculation that I told you about. And I want you to do it using these particular values, right? Because remember, A and B, they don't have a value up here. They're just placeholders. Here I'm actually saying, what that value should be. I'm saying I want a 3 and I want a 4. And now if you're up on your SAT shortcuts, you know that a 3-4 triangle is going to have a hypotenuse of 5, a 3-4-5 right triangle. So here we're calling this. We're saying give me Pythagorean theorem of 3 comma 4 and then print the result. Print just means show me the answer on the screen. So when we run this, we should get 5. Lo and behold, we do get five. So it is working. Whenever you define a new function, always test it on a case you know the answer to. Uh, we could also test it on one comma one, right? A 45, uh, 45 triangle, that should be square root of two. Sure enough, that looks like square root 2, 1.414. That's a, that's a number I recognize. And so now I can go and use this in cases I don't know the answer to. So I can put in, uh, you know, some random numbers. Let's suppose I put in a 7 and a 23 here. And uh, one thing you'll notice in the Jupyter Notebook when I start to type this, it actually gives me a little tooltip uh, to remind me of what the arguments are. Because now that I've defined PT of A and B, it actually knows that it needs two arguments, an A and a B. Again, that's why it's nice to name these things you might recognize. So this is where it might be better to call this side one and side two, because then I'll remember what those arguments are. And there I go, I get a hypotenuse of 24.04. I didn't know that was the hypotenuse of a seven by 23 right triangle, but now I have that information in front of me. Um, I mentioned earlier that these things can be uh, as long as you want. Um, so let's suppose we wanted to make a function that required more steps than this part, right? That's the part that always takes the longest to do. So the square root part 
is x equal negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c. So you notice I'm just translating the math that I can recite in the song into the, uh, into the code here. So I'm taking b squared minus 4ac, and now I want to take the square root of that. So I'll use my trick with the parentheses here. Go to the end of the line and raise all of that to the 1 half power. Very similar to what we did up here with Pythagorean theorem. And then let's do the numerator part. So the numerator in the quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b. Uh-oh, we need plus or minus on this. So we're actually going to need to do a couple things here. So we're going to need to say plus uh, the square root. Uh, let's call this one a numerator 1. So negative b plus the square root. And then let's do numerator 2 as negative b minus the square root, x equals negative b plus or minus square root, right? So I have numerator one and numerator two. You're wondering, how are we gonna give two answers? Don't worry, uh, a, a Python function can do that. And then we want the denominator to equal, all divided by two a, two times a. And so now, my answers are gonna be numerator one over denominator and numerator two over denominator. So we'll call this one answer one equals numerator one over denominator. And you notice that uh, a deep note, which I'm working in here, remembers what uh, variables you've defined. So if you start typing a variable you've already defined, you can actually click on it to auto-complete it, which is pretty cool. And then we'll do the same thing here with answer two is numerator two divided by denominator. And now the thing you've been wondering, Brian, how am I going to return two answers? How am I gonna have it spit out two things? This is actually possible to do. You just say return answer one, and comma, answer two. So just like you can have multiple inputs separated by commas, you can have multiple outputs separated by commas, and Jupyter can handle that just fine. Oh, actually, one thing I need to fix. Uh, I made these lowercase b's. I need to make these uppercase b's because you always want to be consistent with your naming. Otherwise, I won't know what little b is. All right, let's try this out here. Let's try a quadratic formula. See, it remembers my function name, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to open my parentheses. It reminds me I have a comma b comma c. Now, I don't want to get into a lesson on complex numbers in Python, so we'll save that for later. Uh, so let's try making a scenario where we're definitely going to get a positive uh, uh, under this square root sign. So that means I need a or c to be negative, but not both. So let's try a negative 1, a 1, and a, let's try c of 0. Uh, C of zero, mm, that's not, yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Let's try this one. So now what happens when I run this, I'm going to get two answers out. I get an answer of zero and I get an answer of one. Uh, why don't we check that? So let's graph using Google, negative uh, one and one, negative x squared plus x. Do I get roots at now at one and zero, I get roots one and zero. Here I get roots at one and zero. Yep, so it's working. Again, you always test it and, and, and check it. And so now I can start playing around with this and make other combinations. So I could change my C to one instead. Run the code cell. And now instead of having to type this over and over again in my calculator, I just come back to the, uh, I just come back to my code cell here and change the values that I'm interested in. And that's the beauty of these functions in Python is that once you define the function, you get to use it over and over again.